Today I'm going to be taking a look at using a NAS to store game files. With a lot of systems having a smaller SSD these days, and a lot of games getting bigger and bigger, it seems like it would be pretty nice to have games on a NAS or otherwise central storage. And with network speeds getting faster too, it seems like the speed disadvantage that networks have is kind of fading away as well. And also there's the possibility to have it so that you can have one copy of the game stored on a NAS, but multiple systems can use it. So if you had one copy on the NAS, you could have two systems using it. And I wanted to take a look at how well I could do all of this, what type of issues I'd run into, and try a number of different possibilities and setups using different protocols and different game installers and see what type of issues I ran into when doing this. The first scenario I took a look at was using a Samba, CIFS, or SMB share. These are all different names for kind of the basic drive map or network drive in Windows and is supported on almost every NAS these days. And it'll just show up kind of like another local disk, but it's on a storage server. And this protocol is designed to be used by multiple systems at the same time. So that way, if you modify a file on one, it'll show up on the other. And I just started adding it in something like Steam and having a game download to it. And most of the time, it works fine. If the game downloads to the share, it launches just fine and works. I had a few issues with games like TF2, where I couldn't complete the initial setup where I would try to install things like DirectX if it was on a network drive. But it would work just fine if I installed it onto a local drive first, did the initial setup, uninstalled it, and installed it on a network drive. Weird, but it did work fine. I then also tested some other things like Epic Games, which all worked fine, and then Valorant, which downloaded successfully onto the network share, but I couldn't launch and just throw an arrow when I tried to launch the game. I'm guessing these issues are likely due to how um, Sambo SMB shares work in Windows. So Windows treats it on a, a per-user level. So if I mount a SMB share as my user, it'll only show up as my user, and then the administrator and other users won't see that share. As opposed to something like an external hard drive, where all the users will see it as a D drive, for example, whatever drive letter you're using. So this means, and I guess is what's happening, is some things are running as an admin, and it can't see the mapped drive, because the admin doesn't have that drive mapped. So I tried mapping the drive as an admin, but I saw the same issues. Um, sometimes I've gotten around this in the past with other things using a full UNC path instead of a mapped drive letter, but most of the game installers I was using won't let you use a UNC path and actually force you to browse in the explorer and use like a drive letter instead of a UNC path. I then decided to try having multiple systems running the same SMB share game at the same time. So I downloaded a game on one system, and then I had two systems viewing the same thing in Steam as the games directory. And the second system just detected the games were already installed and would play them just fine. And I didn't have any issues launching the game from two systems on the same SMB share at the same time. It just seemed to work fine and I didn't notice any issues. But I'm kind of guessing there could be a possibility for issues if things like updates were happening. Where one system would update it and then a game would be running, but it would be updated when the game was running. I can imagine that can cause issues doesn't seem super likely, and it would be very hard for me to test as I don't control when the updates come down. So next I looked at another protocol, iSCSI. As opposed to SMB that shows you direct files, iSCSI deals with blocks and shows up as another internal hard drive on your system. And because of how it works, it works exactly like an internal hard drive, but it's over the network instead of being in your local system. Every game and program thinks of it as another internal hard drive. And I tried installing games, and it worked perfectly. I didn't notice any issues using iSCSI to install games on. Performance was fine over a gigabit network, and games would load in just as I expected them to. I didn't notice any issues when doing this testing, but in the past I have noticed some problems with iSCSI with sleep and booting up. Because iSCSI is based off the network stack and needs that all to be working, it often takes a lot longer to start working compared to an internal drive and sometimes things get a little bit unhappy. I had it so like Explorer would hang for a few seconds until the network came up after being resumed from sleep. This likely won't be an issue for games as they ran a good amount after the system is finished starting, but it might be cause for a few issues if you like to sleep your system and resume it, especially for some network cards that often take a little bit longer to get going after being resumed from sleep. Let's talk about saving space with iSCSI with multiple clients storing the same files. Unlike SMB, where the same file can be visible to multiple clients at once, since iSCSI uses blocks, it won't actually have those blocks visible. 
And if you try to make it mounted on multiple systems at the same time, stuff just doesn't work. The file system is not designed to be used like that. But luckily, on the iSCSI host, you can run some tools to help save space. This depends on what you're using as an iSCSI host, but I was using ZFS, so I was using ZFS dedupe. ZFS dedupe has a huge list of you probably don't want to do it, but it is probably a good representation of other deduplication systems, like maybe the one built into Windows Server. And I was able to get a pretty good dedupe ratio of three systems that I had with the same game files, over 2x file savings compared to them all alone. Not as good as exactly having the same files, but pretty good and very low maintenance because dedupe just runs in the background. The other way to save file space would be to have clones. So have an initial image where you download all your games and files you want to, then you can do a thin clone to another system and have it use that thin clone. So then that other system just sees a drive with all of its files it wants on it, and if it makes a change, it just records in the iSCSI target that the changes that are made made to that original clone. So then it only has to store the changes for the second system, not the full second set of data. Doing a clone like this could be great where you have kind of a list of games you might want to play on multiple systems and you can easily push out. So if there's an update, you just update your image and push it out to everyone and now they all have the latest version of the game and they don't have to update it themselves. Now that I've done some testing with network storage for games, let's go over what I think would be kind of the best solutions for different use cases. The first thing is I'd still generally recommend having local storage for games. It's the least hassle on issues, it's the highest performance, you don't have to worry about network setup, if there's a network hiccup or issue it doesn't take other things down, and if you're planning something around it, I typically aim to do it unless you have a good reason not to store it locally. Especially with things like direct storage on the horizon that we're going to basically require NVMe drives and it set a much higher bar for performance than we've recently needed in games before. If you already have a NAS set up with a NAT network drive, I'd just say give it a shot and see how it works. Most of the time it's pretty easy to put it on there, see what happens, you're not going to break things if the game doesn't launch, and worst case you have to install it on a local drive or do another method. And if you have multiple systems and a shared network drive, I'd say give it a shot with multiple ones. I wasn't able to test every possible use case, but with my limited testing of multiple game clients running off one SMB share, if it worked, it seemed to just run fine and I didn't notice any issues when actually playing the game. If you're setting up a new NAS for this, I'd say go iSCSI. It's really not too much more complicated than a standard SMB share to get working. It's pretty darn seamless, it just starts right at boot up in Windows. Windows has the utility built in to run the iSCSI initiator and it just works like a local disk and every game I try just launches and runs fine without an error. And if you have multiple clients, I'd say go multiple iSCSI typically as it's the least overhead. If your NAS can do dedupe, I'd say give it a shot. A lot of the times it has a relatively low impact if done right, but if you're doing things like ZFS, I'd stay away from dedupe as ZFS dedupe is still quite poor for almost all use cases. If you're doing something like an internet cafe or a LAN center where you have multiple systems and you want them to all be set up with the same set of games, the iSCSI cloning actually works pretty darn well as you can start from an initial template and just push it out to everyone. And with scripting, you could push it out every night. So you have one system that just downloads games to a folder, keeps them up to date, and you just push it out to everyone so then those systems don't actually have to do any updating. Also saves you on network bandwidth, but you do have to kind of set it up to do that, and it's a little more set up to do the cloning versus just having a separate iSCSI image for each system and letting their own software update it. Thanks for watching this video going over using a NAS to store game files, and leave any comments below if you have any ideas or suggestions.